when when we have human to human transplants, there's a lot of effort that goes into to matching uh, the the organ with the the donor. And so all of that work will need to be done as well. So there will be a best match. But of course, that's very difficult to get perfect between uh, pigs and humans. And then finally, in our own um, genetics, we have these relics of viruses called uh, retroviruses. And pigs have exactly the same. But naturally, there are differences between the pig viruses and the human viruses. So there's a potential risk there for those different types of viruses to mix with each other, just like you get uh, with flu influenza occurring, how you can get different strains of flu mixing together, and then you get a particularly nasty um, flu. So those kind of issues will have either been bred out of, of the pigs, or they would have used this, this technology known as gene editing to actually knock out the function of those genes. But it's a lot of work that they've done here. Oh, God. And if the body rejects it even after that... Is it something that they can, would they then have to remove it and, and try again? Or can they do something else? I mean, it's, it seems like a real last chance saloon when you're going for a pig's heart. Oh, com completely. I mean, you're absolutely right with that, Alan, that, um, that if, if this fails, then you can imagine that it may well be quite a swift failure. I mean, they've got over the, the issues of hyperacute rejection, which would have happened in, in seconds or minutes. So, so that's a big, big advance in its own right. The fact that this human patient is, is doing quite well several days later is actually quite promising for, for that. But there are huge questions that still remain around this. So um, even with a human-to-human -human transplant, there are big concerns about how long that organ will last, whether it will be uh, subject to, to other forms of chronic rejection. And then, of course, these, these individuals, they'll be under levels, just you, like you said a minute ago, they have lots of chemicals pumped into their body to prevent that rejection occurring. Now, you can imagine that the levels required to, to prevent the rejection of a pig organ are going to be pretty high. And what kind of impact will that have on the patient in the longer term? And all of these are completely unknown questions because this has never been successful, even out beyond a, a few days before. So this is all completely uncharted territory. It's fascinating, isn't it? Professor Chris Denning, thank you so much for joining us.